This is my buddy Taylor. We've been friends since high school. Known this guy forever. Uh, we're always doing car stuff, spending way too much money. Uh, <laughs> just doing stupid shit all the time. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much fact. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty much in fact. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he's just as into cars and uh, motorcycles as I am. So, it's actually his first bike. So, <laughs> this thing's yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> I I, I kind of wish that I'd got this as my first bike because you can really just beat on it and uh, mess with everything. So. <clears throat> As we were saying, um, and I'm still sitting like this, but whatever, let's go ahead and do the shot. These are the two bikes that we ended up with. Uh, originally, we ordered the uh, Hellcat, no, Tau Tau Hellcat. Sorry, these names are just so easy to remember. Um, I ended up with an Ice Bear Fuerza PMZ125. Back to basics with the 350Z. Um, Taylor ended up with the Boom Vader, yep. which is the greatest name since Slice in bread. It's yeah. um, <laughs> pretty sick. I'm with wow. You. Wow. The Empire now. <laughs> Galactic war to ensue. So, uh, we originally paid $1,092 for the Hellcat, but both of us got sick of waiting. Um, apparently, when a pandemic hits, everybody needs tiny escape motorcycles. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these things were on back order for like three months. So we just decided to go ahead and cancel our orders. Um, he wanted his for Grid Life Colorado, which we ended up going to. He ordered his, uh, you know, five days before the event and yeah, it got it in. It showed up within 72 hours. Placed the order on a Thursday. It showed up like, I guess Monday. So technically three business days it showed up. Overnight parts from China, baby. Yep. Yeah, it was here quick. And uh, so he got his and I, got an email from Q9 Power Sports saying, hey, the uh, Hellcat is so badass that you need a license to buy it. So um, do you want to pay $199 more? And so anyways, these things are not without their problems, <laughs> just like this camera is right now. Um, you know, right out of the gate, his was leaking oil from the uh, the crankcase there. Yep. Um, so that was fun to unbox and figure yeah. out. And mine, having all of 70 miles now, uh, the starter is doing something weird. It sounds like the starter are out of a Mitsubishi Montero Sport. <laughs> so we're gonna figure that out today. And while we're at it, we're also gonna go ahead and do a few upgrades. Um, one, number one being a new engine bolt for this thing, because I've lost two of them already. So if you buy one of these, please change out the engine bolts. Loctite. Yeah, Loctite, <laughs> better bolts, not made out of cheese. Um, yeah, start there and then, you know, we're gonna do a couple upgrades here, make them a little more fun, just make them a little bit more reliable, hopefully, and uh, feel better. Uh, Taylor has some carb upgrades. He's got an intake. What else do you have? Uh, well, I've got kind of a full uh, makeover for the front controls so I got new bars uh, new hand grips uh, throttle and then um, some of the thumb controls as well as new levers so we're just gonna kind of do a full makeover of the, uh, the forward controls on this all right so I'm gonna go through some of the parts we got for the boom Vader today I'm gonna do some minor upgrades on the engine as well as the handlebars grips controls like that um, so major one I've got here, this is a uh, genuine Makuni VM22. It's a 22 millimeter carb. Um, and then I've just got an Amazon uh, intake elbow with a spacer. And then we've also got an air filter to go with it. It's just a regular pod filter. Um, next thing on the list, I've got some new levers. Um, these are some aluminum levers that are adjustable. So we've got six points of adjustment if you want the grip to be or if you want the handle to be closer to your grip, you can adjust it like that. Uh, next thing we got is some new controls for the uh, left hand. Um, the stock buttons and controls are kind of plasticky and cheap. Um, so this is aluminum, an aluminum piece that has kind of a simpler setup, makes it look a little like more, a little bit more streamlined and clean. Um, so you have your bright control, your horn, as well as your turn signals. And then we'll go through the wiring setup later as well. Oh, hold on, I didn't even know that you got that. 
You didn't? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you cheating me here? Are you trying to make your bike nicer than mine? I guess I didn't really think about it. Yeah, I, oh. I saw another YouTuber that went through this part, and it looked really cool. So, yeah, okay. I'm going to be leveled up on you. Wow. <laughs> cool. Uh, next thing we got for the carb, uh, we got some new jetting. Uh, we obviously got to tune the carb. Um, every bike is different, so I can't just throw it in there and hope it runs right. We're going to have some tri trial and error with the tuning. Um, we've also got some Vans Colt grips. Uh, David has these on his Rebel, and I really like these. So these are just your brown waffle style. It's very much like the shoes. Um, and I really like the look of these on his bike, so I wanted to get some for mine too. And we've got kind of a look I want to go for on the bike, which I'll get into in some later episodes, and then maybe we can, you know, track the transformation of the bike. Uh, lastly, we got the Pro Taper bars here. These are the KLX 110 or the Honda Mini bars. Uh, really looking forward to these. These are supposed to really change like how the bike drives. Um, it's a wider setup, a little bit lower down. And then you've got, of course, your, your padding here and some nice anodized billet parts to hold the bars together. Uh, but that'll be it for today. We're gonna go over the install later on and then see how she rides afterwards. All right, guys, so these are the parts that we are going to put on the uh, Fuerza. So first of all, we have the throttle tube here. So you can see that's a lot nicer than the uh, plasticky one that these come with. Um, Taylor actually ordered one of these too, but due to unforeseen Amazon circumstances, uh, he didn't receive that. So I'm gonna jealously, well for him, I'm gonna install it on my bike. And then I also have adjustable brake and clutch levers as well. Decided to go with some gaudy gold, match the forks on my bike. Um, so these will be really nice. The other ones, they just feel really cheap as well too because that's what a $1,200 bike is. Um, also, the stock grips are very plasticky in nature. They don't feel good at all. So I kind of went with these dirt bike style ones here. Um, kind of have that waffle-esque grip. Not quite like the Vans, but they're really grippy. Uh, this is the style I always ran on dirt bikes back when I used to ride. So those will be really nice to have as well. And then lastly, I have a 17 tooth sprocket up front. So this should allow us in, uh, in theory to catch a few extra miles per hour so I can edge out some of the el other Hellcats around the neighborhood. Um, they're not gonna wanna mess with us after we install that. So that's what I've got for my bike and we're gonna go ahead and throw those on. I think uh, the first mod that we ought to do is go ahead and put the Hellcat badge on.
As you can see, the badge looks uh, nice and normal here. It's in a pretty good location. But if we come around to this side, somehow the fastidious and uh, tireless hands that are the Ice Bear uh, quality control somehow miss this <laughs> and it overruns the body line and uh, the back of the sticker is sticking out here. Hopefully that'll focus. Yeah, so let's go ahead and fix that as well too because this thing just can't be rolling around on the Ice Bear like that. So I got one last thing to do and uh, I'm not even sure if it's gonna work or not. I think it will. I haven't looked at what type of bulb this bike actually takes, but it looks the same as the uh, Rebel did. And this is actually a kit that I had for my Honda Rebel, um, but it only uses one of the two lights in here. And uh, so will this bike as well. So we're gonna pull off that uh, headlight assembly and see if this LED will plug in because that is one of the first upgrades you want to do when you get a bike all about visibility and safety. So I'm gonna try and go ahead and throw this in. see that it's working so awesome and I can feel the fan clicking on as well too so that's a good sign so I'm trying low and high beam yeah look at that oh man that's so much better probably shouldn't look directly at that but I just did this smart moves big moves All right, so all that remains to be seen is if we can get this to uh, package in here nicely as well too. So, we got this thing running okay. Still need a new starter motor. Because uh, I'm having to run start this thing. And uh, as much as I love doing that and people watching me and making fun of me, I, uh, I'd like to have the electric starter. Street race, street race. Wow, revs out so smoothly, not a vibration in the world. This thing is as coarse as 40 grit. This is the part where I'll probably have to uh, get out the golf plug. Make sure and keep the ladies back because they're going to be super interested since we're on these hot rides. 
Hey man, watch out for all the eligible women around here. They're gonna be throwing themselves at you, so just beware. Might end up with a baby mama. Yes. Oh no, it's a blue light. Hey, hey, that dang girl stole my truck. Go ahead, get my license plate number. Huh. She left you, Nick. I don't mind. <laughs> 